Hey everybody, it's Barbara Schwartz. How are you today? Uh, thank you so much for joining me while I make some AccuWeight Legal Cheese. Today, I'm going to make goat cheese and all I'm doing is substituting what normally would be cow's milk for goat's milk. Otherwise, the recipe is the same as published at the website. Um, but it's nice sometimes to just have a little variation and uh, a little bit of different taste. And uh, I always love goat cheese. Now, to get that real goat cheese flavor that you get when you buy goat cheese, you do need to let it sit for a few days. It will get more um, that point pungent. I don't know what the right word is. Um, it'll get that more pungent. That's the word I was looking for. Taste um, over a few days. I like it warm right off the stove, so I don't wait, but it does have a different tang to it than using cow's milk, which essentially is making farmer cheese. Um, and at the end, I'll also explain a way to make a variation that turns into Indian paneer. So to start with, we just put out, uh, I brought out all my ingredients. I'm just gonna review everything with you so you can see what we're gonna do. And so I started with my goat milk, and again, you want to make sure you've got whole fat goat milk. I'm using the brand Real Lemon Lemon Juice. Again, we need something acidic to separate the curds and whey. Um, as we know, lemons are actually fruit, so they're not allowed on a milk day. But lemon juice from concentrate, such as the brand Real Lemon, you can use other brands. Ultimately, what you're looking for is if you look, calories zero. And again, it says lemon juice from concentrate. So in actually doing the separation, the uh, ingredients and the proportions that we're using will work. If you were using real lemon juice at a time, for example, not on AccuWeight, you wouldn't need as much lemon juice. We need a little bit more because we're using the lemon juice from concentrate. Technically, those are our only two ingredients, but it's gonna have a very, very simple taste. So once it's ready, most people would enjoy having some seasoning. I like to use Himalayan pink crystal salt and I use Bragg's organic sprinkle. As you can see, it's got 24 herbs and spices, so it keeps it really interesting, but that is sodium free, which is why I add my own salt. Other things you need for prepping, you need a little pot. Um, I've already poured eight ounces in because I'm using an eight ounce measuring cup and we need 10 ounces of milk, a piece of cheesecloth. I never knew what cheesecloth was until I went to make this recipe. You can get this in your local supermarket. You can get it online. It's relatively inexpensive, but that's actually how you're going to separate the curds and whey. I use a sieve. You can use a colander. Ultimately, we're going to lay it over and you just need a couple of bowls for preparation. So um, what we're gonna start. So the first thing is we need 10 ounces of milk. And so, as I mentioned, I already put eight ounces into the pot. I've measured out another two ounces and we're just gonna pour it in the pot. That simple. And we're gonna put it on a low flame. Now, because we're only heating 10 ounces, we gotta keep an eye on it. It's gonna heat fairly quickly. We're not gonna put it on high, we're gonna put it on medium. And ultimately, if you have a food thermometer, you're looking to get to about 180 degrees. If you don't have a food thermometer, I'm not using one today, what you're gonna be looking for is that little film that comes just as milk is heating up. It's gonna make a thin film. When that happens is when it's gonna be time for us to turn it off. I have a drop more milk in the measuring cup. In the interim, I'm gonna put, we need one ounce of lemon juice. So I'm gonna use the measuring cup and just prep it so it's ready. We're just gonna put one ounce of lemon juice ready for when the heat, milk heats up. So now it's just a matter of patience. We're gonna wait while the milk heats up. So while we're waiting, let's talk. So. People have been asking me about my progress. Today is a full week that I'm on the program. I'm gonna change my beads today. And I'm happy to report that detox has gone well. I did have a headache in the first few days. I was a little lethargic. Um, blood sugar's balancing, I could tell. I get If you get a little shaky hands in the morning, that's low blood sugar. Um, so for the detox headache, honestly, I just drank lots of water. You can take an analgesic 
aspirin, Tylenol, Advil, whatever works for you, um, you can take that. I kind of pushed through and just drank lots of water. And I did start with the milk day, so I was able after 12 o'clock to have a cup of coffee and that helped because part of my detox headache was definitely caffeine withdrawal. Um, if, again, in those first few days, if you're feeling a little lethargic or if you wake up and you've got some shaky hands, again, that's your blood sugar getting rebalanced. Um, a nice simple fix, teaspoon of honey dissolved in hot tea or hot water. And that's gonna put a nice steady floor under your blood sugar and it's gonna take that edge off like we get our teeth on edge. It's gonna take that edge off and it's just gonna smooth things out. You'll find that not that all of a sudden you get this energy boost, but that lethargicness is gonna disappear. Um, not like magic, it happens over kind of eight to 10 minutes, but just it takes that little bit of edge off and then you feel better. So in the first few weeks, you can do that as needed and also women, a lot of us experience those same highs and lows and that lethargic feeling right around our menstrual cycle and around ovulation. So if you're experiencing that, um, again, a teaspoon of honey dissolved in hot tea or hot water will take care of it. Now, I'm just gonna take a moment and I'm gonna just gently stir the milk to make sure nothing's burning. We don't want it to burn. So. Um, I read online, I used to use a metal spoon, but that it actually can react. So I just use, you know, a silicon, you can use wood, but they do suggest that you don't use a metal spoon when doing this. That's where I go, not so much of a maven in the kitchen. So uh, I don't know the reasons why, but I listen to the experts. So continuing with my progress, I'm happy to report I am down about six and a half pounds. I started at 162.5, and I'm now down to 158 as of this morning. So, you know, look, mentally, that feels great to know. More importantly, I can feel it in my body. I'm starting to see it in my face. My face had been really bloated, and I'm starting to look in the mirror and see myself again. I'm definitely feeling it kind of in here, and the bloat is gone. Um, jeans that weren't fitting last week, they're still snug. I have work to do but I can get into them now comfortably. They're still tight, but at least I can get them on and I can zip them. And that's huge progress, right? I always say it's not about the scale, it's all about the fashion. Your clothes are gonna tell you what's going on. So I'm feeling very excited and very motivated to keep going because I can feel that I'm on the path to my goal. And that's what this is all about, right? Now we're human, we have challenges, we have temptations. Um, if you fall off, just do yourself a favor, brush yourself off, just brush it off and get right back on and keep focused on your goal. We're human, stuff happens, okay? Forgive yourself and just move forward. I was just discussing with my family, it's four weeks, today's Monday, so four and a half weeks until Thanksgiving. Think about it, you can be down at least 15 pounds by Thanksgiving, that's a heck of a lot to feel grateful for. That's a clothing size that we can be down. I'm just gonna stir the milk again. Again, just wanna make sure it's not burning, but we don't have that coating quite yet. So it's still on, so you can see. So again, I'm just stirring. So like, let's keep our eye on the big things. 2020 has been a heck of a year and uh, we have a lot of challenges that have been presented to us that are very unexpected, but we also have things that are within our control. And the fact that this pandemic turned into a pandemic, okay, we're human, there were unexpected stresses, there were unexpected events. Um, life is still an unknown, right? We still don't have what is gonna open up the world to normalcy again with related, you know, with relation to COVID. So, what we do have control over is our own behavior. So now let's take that control back. Let's take care of ourselves. Let's have a lot to be thankful for Thanksgiving. And think about it, it's four weeks until Thanksgiving, but we still have about nine or 10 weeks until New Year's. Well, that's 30, maybe even 40 pounds we can be down going into the new year. And so no New Year's resolution, we're already achieving what we need. 
and feeling great about herself. So there's no time like the present. And it doesn't matter what you did today and it doesn't matter what you did yesterday. It's from what you do from this moment going forward. You're in control. You've got this. I'm gonna turn back to the milk because we are just getting to that point where it's starting to foam up and boil. So I'm gonna give it another minute. It's gonna start making that little foamy top and I'm just gonna turn it off. And we're gonna let it sit for a minute. We're just gonna let it cool itself down. Now again, I typically do this with cow's milk. This is only the second time I'm doing it with goat milk. So we'll see how it's going. So we're just gonna let that cool for a couple of minutes and then all we're gonna do is we're gonna add the lemon juice and we're just gonna let it sit to start separating, okay? Ah, my daughter has just taken a break from remote learning and she would like to say hello. Say hi, AJ. Hi. <laughs> So she likes to be my helper in the kitchen. And she said to me, if you're recording and I'm done with class, can I come say hello? And I said, absolutely. Oh, she wants to introduce you. This is, is that cracker? cracker? That's Cracker. We have two kitties, Cracker and Barrel. They're twins. So this is Cracker. You want to say hi, Cracker? Hi, Cracker. Yeah, we'll hi. keep her away from the cheese, okay? Hi, hi. Hi, hi. Okay. So welcome to my family. <laughs> so while it's cooling, let's keep talking. Now, I will point you to the magic protocol. So if you're having trouble with control, the magic protocol, which is um, created by my dad, who again is a retired psychologist, right? So this is all a mental thing. When we say I don't have control, typically it's psychological. And using the Qigong breathing and some very simple tools, you're able to take your control back so that you're able to stay on plan. And I'm gonna give you the brief and then I'm gonna remind you and we'll repost links to his full training session on that. But basically we say the best way to remember how to do the magic protocol is a new way to work your abs. A, B, S. Admit that you wanna cheat. Do the Qigong breathing. You're gonna do three Qigong breaths and then you're gonna take a substitute. It could be some Tic Tacs, it could be a Listerine breast strip, it could be some sugar-free chocolate pudding, it could be a Dr. John's lollipop, anything that you're gonna enjoy for yourself. Now, you're not gonna enjoy it as much as whatever it was that you wanted as a cheat, but it's still something that you enjoy. So you're substituting with something that is serving your bigger goal that is still enjoyable so that you're not deprived. So it's admit, and you wanna admit it out loud, I want that piece of chicken, or I want the cookie. I want the whatever that everybody's eating. But I love me, and I'm on a path to what I really want, which is feeling better in my own body, right? My clothes fitting, my energy back. Every one pound you lose is four pounds of pressure off your knees. We talked about by Thanksgiving being down 15 pounds. That's 60 pounds of pressure off your knees. That's huge. Go out for a walk, you're gonna feel the difference. Running up a flight of stairs, you're going to know that weight loss is significant. Think about it, 15 pounds, that's three sacks of potatoes. Three sacks of potatoes that you're not carrying around. So even if it doesn't take you all the way to goal, that one month is going to make a significant difference in how you feel about you. So let's take a look at our milk and see how it's doing. See, I don't know if you can see, yeah, there you go. But it's got that nice little film over the top. So I'm just gonna stir it. And so I break up the film. And now I am going to pour in the lemon juice. That's all I'm going to do. It's one ounce of lemon juice. I'm just going to pour it in and I'm going to stir. So just very gently stir it in. And now it's about patience. We're just going to let it sit for about three to five minutes. So let's get back to chatting. So, you know, a lot of what I hear in the struggle is things like 
okay, my family is sitting down to a meal, all the snacks are in the house, and I'm feeling the temptation all the time. Temptation is normal, but just because the temptation is there doesn't mean you have to give in. So the key is figuring out some tools that work for you. Now, my family, I'm in the house with them, I'm with my parents, I'm with my daughter, everybody's on regular eating schedules, but I'm doing Accuate, and again, I've done a week. Now, do I have an advantage over you? Of course, we're an Accuate family, right? My dad is one of the founders, and my family is very familiar with it, and I was already doing this as a career when my daughter was born, and the joke is she was even teasing that, you know, she was putting beads on her dolls when she was two, three years old, right? Because you wear your beads on the back of your head. Um, she was putting beads on her dolls. So she's grown up with it. It is normal for her. You know, when I say to my mother, listen, it's after six o'clock. I'm happy to come sit with you, but I'm not eating. She understands and she's not going to argue with me. So I definitely have a leg up and I'm realistic about that. Okay. But... Um, you know, and my mother will actually, and she said last night, like, you don't have to sit with us. You're not eating, but I want that precious family time. And I will say last night, I chose not to sit. I stood in the kitchen a little further away, um, not to have all the aromas, but I was here and I was present. And again, that's a choice. Um, if any of you watched my video from yesterday where I made some baked acorn squash with apples, which by the way, was absolutely to die for. Um, we got invited to some friends to uh, basically an outdoor play date. Um, they have a little fire pit and they were roasting marshmallows and cooking hot dogs. And overall, you know, a great fun outdoor barbecue afternoon. Okay, we had a little rain unexpectedly, so we had to cut it short, but it was a really fun day. Look, my inner child wanted a roasted marshmallow as much as the next guy. And I knew one of my weaknesses I love hot dogs, love them. It's one of my favorite foods. And I knew that smell might get to me, but I also knew that I have a goal and I don't want anything to get between me and my goal. And if I do, it's by choice, not because I smelled something. And there was just no reason to go off the program yesterday. So what did I do? I planned ahead and I made something hearty that I enjoy, that is flavorful, so I wouldn't feel deprived. And I told my friends in advance, I said, listen, I'm doing Accuate right now, so I'm gonna bring my own food, so don't plan food for me. And uh, I hope you're not insulted. And they were fine with it. And what I also did, because I realized that my acorn squash wasn't a full pound and a half and I hadn't had any other veggies, um, is I took some, you know, a little container of guacamole with some carrot sticks. And so now I had something that when I felt like crunching, and so when they were eating their roasted marshmallows, I was having my guacamole with carrot sticks. And when they were having dinner, I was having my acorn squash. And we were all on the earlier side because um, again, it gets dark early. So everybody was having an early dinner. So that kind of suited me. Um, and when we got home, my family, my parents were sitting down to dinner and my daughter hadn't finished eating. So she sat down with them and like I said, I stayed in the kitchen with everybody. Now, when I'm really feeling temptation because of aroma, I take a, a little vial of peppermint oil that I keep. It's up in my bedroom, so I didn't think to bring it down. But what I do is I shake the vial so there's a tiny drop of oil on my fingertip. One pass, I dab it on my upper lip below my nostrils. This way, the oil, it seeps in. Now, all I smell is peppermint. I can't smell the other aromas. And it's the aroma that causes us to salivate. And once we're salivating, now that craving, we really have to fight it. But I want you to imagine when you have a nose cold, you can walk into the kitchen and somebody's making your favorite food and you're like, eh, can't smell it, so I'm really just, it, I'm not that enticed by it, right? When we can't smell it, our taste buds are not fully engaged, we don't miss it that much. Same thing, so when we can smell the mint, the food looks good, but because we no longer have that aroma to tempt us, it's much simpler to walk away. Other great deterrents, two of my favorites, 
Listerine breath strips, those little uh, Listerine that you pull out as a very thin strip and you stick on your tongue. It's mouthwash in a little strip. So when you stick it to your tongue, it's actually kind of melds onto your tongue so you can't spit it out. It is strong because it is mouthwash. But think about if you just brushed your teeth. If somebody offered you orange juice, mm, you're not having any of that because Again, it just spoils the taste. The, the strong mint flavor hurts the taste of the orange juice. Well, those Listerine breath strips will do that for almost every food. So it will remove the temptation to pick. So it's a great thing also besides aroma to do if you're cooking for others. You won't absentmindedly pick if you've got a Listerine breath strip on your tongue. Similarly, Listerine about a year ago came out with a new product called Listerine Ready Tabs. They're little squares, about a little bigger than a piece of chewing gum. They're thick. They're meant to put in your mouth, swish around, bite into it, and swallow. They're alcohol free, they're sugar free, they're Accuate legal. The mint is so strong. The first time I ever tried it in the office, I was in a different room and my colleague sitting in the other room said, what did you just bite into that I smell mint in this room? It was that strong. She could smell it on the other side. It was literally like, woo, but it's so strong. Like once you get over the initial shock of the strength, you will not want anything else. And the nice part is if you're socially with other people, it is breath freshener. So you've got fresh breath to boot. So let's take a look at how our cheese is evolving. So right now, uh, it's not separating so much in here. We'll see what happens. Hopefully this works out. Like I said, I typically do cow's milk and this is only my second time doing goat milk, but it did work last time I did it. So fingers crossed, I think it needs a little more time. I don't see that much separation yet in my pot. It does look like a little bit, but that's where also we're going to rely on the cheesecloth is to do the separation. So we'll see what happens. Um, fingers crossed, we'll have success. Um, and again, I'm on a milk day, so I am planning, hopefully it goes well, that that will be part of my milk day. Luckily I'm home, so if something goes sideways, I can make something else last minute. And that's the key. When you're trying something new, have a plan, have a backup, and know what you're gonna do. So let's talk about some of the other questions that have come up recently. Now, many of you, similar to me, are now working at home where normally you'd be in an office. So if you're around the house more, now is the perfect time to experiment with recipes. I have been roasting up a storm, sauteing, cooking, doing, um, even when not on Accuate because I have the luxury of being around my kitchen more than usual. So it's a great time to go out of your cooking comfort zone and try some new things. Um, one of, again, we have over 500 recipes at the website now. Now that can be a little overwhelming. So what I recommend is this, and it's something I actually still do on a regular basis, is our recipe page has an ingredient search. So sometimes I'll just go into my fridge and say, hmm, I've got some leftover zucchini. What can I do with that? And I'll type zucchini into the recipe page, into the ingredient search, and see what recipes are around that use zucchini. It'll open up a whole world of new ideas that I might not have thought of, but maybe one of you did and submitted a recipe that I didn't think to try. Um, one of my Steady recipes, um, many of you have seen. I haven't done it yet while I'm on um, plan this time, but I'm sure in the next week or two it will happen. And I love this also because it's a nice, simple way to make a meal for you on a veggie day and a meal for your family at the same time so that you're all having the same meal essentially. Um, and so it's one-stop cooking. And that is the Palmini Primavera. Um, the Palmini are the Heart of Palm Linguini Noodles. They are different brands now on the market. They were the original. And um, the nice part is they come already shredded in a can, so you're not spiralizing anything. They're all ready to go. They also now came out with pouches. And what you're doing is basically sauteing up some vegetables. I buy plain tomato sauce. You can get even Hunt's tomato sauce in a can. 
Um, I look on for whatever's on sale that has no added sugar or significant added ingredients. Again, a little olive oil is okay, so I'll typically buy a plain sauce that has tomatoes, olive oil, garlic, onion, and seasoning. So I will chop up a bunch of veggies, whatever's in the fridge, saute it up in the pan. I'm a big spinach person, so I almost always start with spinach and then add in some fresh garlic, maybe some onion, and sometimes it's zucchini, sometimes it's red peppers, sometimes it's mushrooms, broccoli, cauliflower, whatever's in the fridge, I chop it up and it goes into the saute. And I saute up the veggies, I add some of the simple sauce, I add a bunch of seasonings. Again, my go-to is the Bragg's Organic Sprinkle. Um, I think this comes up backwards when I'm facing me, um, so I'll record it the other way in a minute. But one of the reasons I love it, I'm gonna just turn that around, is if you look, it has 24 different herbs and spices. Now, I am not a kitchen expert by any strokes of the imagination. So as not an expert, I'm not good at saying, ooh, that spice or seasoning will taste good with that vegetable or that food. So having everything together and it gives a little bit of just an enhanced flavor is a dream to me because it's no think. And I haven't put it on anything and ever said, ugh, not with that. Um, so it seems like a real blessing for me to have it um, just that simple, 24 herbs in a sprinkle. And that has no sodium in it. So then I usually use some kind of Himalayan pink salt um, or a sea salt. And this way I have a little bit of that salty taste because I am a salt girl. I love salt. Um, so anyway, so I saute up all the veggies, add some seasonings to personal taste, and then you just rinse the pelmeni noodles. And you want to, I don't dump the can in because then you're going to get all the water from washing them off. So I just use some, a fork or some tongs and I put them into the saute the last 30 to 60 seconds. So this way the noodles heat up. And now I have a wonderful saute. If I'm cooking for many people, I'll do double the portion, right? I might use two cans and just make a bigger saute. Now, when I'm actually feeding me on Accuate and my family as well, in a second stir fry pan, I'll take some chicken breast or some fish and I'll saute it up. And so it's being browned and cooked at the same time as my saute is going. I've got two pans side by side going at the same time. And now when it's done, I just put out two bowls on the table. So it becomes a serve yourself. I'm only gonna have the palmini, the palmini primavera, but my family is also gonna help themselves to mix in the protein. So now I've made, stood at the stove for one meal and it works for both of us on or off plan. Okay, so let's check on our cheese and see how it's doing. Um, I'm not so sure, so let's check it out. I will say with cow's milk, this works every time, so let's be hopeful. So what I do is I use a sieve. You can use a colander, you can use anything like that. Just something that, again, we're gonna use this to separate the curds and whey. And, sorry, I need two hands usually. So we're just gonna lay the cheesecloth over that, right? So we're gonna catch the curds. I never knew that, with, right? Little Miss Muffet, I never actually knew what curds and whey were until now. So now we just take the milk and we pour it over the cheesecloth. Oops, let me, this is at a funny angle, so let me get that. I don't want to catch it all in the cheesecloth. So let's see how that's going. And I just have a mug, you can use a bowl. You just need something underneath to catch the whey. Now, there is a video online at the website at the actual Accuate 15 minute cheese recipe. There is a video of me making this with cow's milk. And again, it separates a little bit differently, but it does look like it's separating. This might just need a little more time. And again, it might need a little more heating as goat's milk. 
So we're just gonna let it drain a little. But I can see it's a little liquidy, but it is separating. And you can kind of see around the edges. If you look here, I'm just gonna lose the little spoon you can see. There we go, you can see it firming up. There you go, so you can kind of see on the edges. Now it takes some time to drain and also to speed it along. I'm gonna see if I can put the phone down. Hang on, let's see that. If I can do, use the, let's see, if I put the phone there, I need two hands. If I lift up the cheesecloth, there we go. There we go. It's helping drain out some of the liquid. And you can see the little ball of cheese forming right there. Now, you're gonna get a firmer ball of cheese by letting it sit. The longer you let it sit to drain, the firmer the cheese is gonna be. And the quicker, I'm impatient. I always just squeeze it out a little bit and then I go for it. Okay, so I'm gonna move that to the side and I'm gonna bring over a bowl. So I have you know, one bowl for draining it. I'll just move this out of the way. I use one bowl for draining and another bowl for the actual cheese. So now, if you can see, it's still a little liquid in there. So for for goat milk, it looks like, and I read that online, that sometimes it helps to let it strain a little longer. But if you can see, because a lot of it is stuck, which doesn't happen as much with the cow's milk, is stuck to the cheesecloth. So I can just peel it off. Oops. And you can see now, it's still a little liquidy, so I can probably just reheat this. But I do have some goat cheese. Let me see. This is, needs to drain a little more. But, mm, tastes good. <laughs> so it's a little more liquidy than when I do the cow's milk one. And I did make the goat milk one once before, and it came out firm so I think last time I did use um, a thermometer so I knew when I hit um, the right temperature which is 180 but you can see it's a little liquidy still but I do have some solid curds in here and uh, mm, even plain it is delicious and then I will firm that up into a ball and then what I do is I just sprinkle on some of my seasonings, again, I use, I use the organic sprinkle and the Himalayan crystal salt. And usually what I do when I'm sitting with it, because if you sprinkle it on the, just the top layer, then when you eat it, you've eaten all the seasoning off. So I usually sit with the sprinkles next to me and I just sprinkle the next layer and uh, keep that flavor going. And I just sit and really enjoy it. So anyway, that is simple cheese. Again, it's a little more liquidy using the goat. Um, I'm gonna give it another try and I will post my final results. I'll see if there's something different I needed to do with the goat milk. But like I said, last time I did it, it came out firm like the cheese that you will see on the website. Um, I will post pictures of that as well. Um, the cow's milk one, has been foolproof. I've made it many, many, many times on and off program because I really enjoy it. And it's just a nice change from having milk and fluids. It feels like, you know, again, a lot of people say, I want something I can chew. Um, and so now, you know, having some cheese is just a different texture for a milk day. Uh, now, I haven't tried this, but my understanding, and I've read this on multiple websites, I just love it when it's warm, so I never have the patience to go to the next step, is that when you make the cow's milk cheese, if you keep it in the cheesecloth and you put it on a plate and then put another plate on top of it, so you might want to make a double portion, like use 20 ounces of milk and uh, two ounces of lemon juice, 
and you leave it, as I said, in the cheesecloth, put it on a plate, put another plate on top of it, and let it sit in the fridge overnight. And the weight of it is gonna compress it, and the cooling, as it hardens, it becomes actual sliceable Indian paneer. And uh, a lot of people love that as well. Again, in this case, we don't have crackers or anything we can put on it, but again, just for something different texture, different slight flavor, it's a nice variation on what we can do. Um, tonight, my dad will be broadcasting Dr. Schwartz Facebook Live at 7 p.m. as we are every Monday night. I hope you will join him. Um, and he's always open to Q&A, so if you have anything you'd like to discuss, um, come on and join him. And uh, I will check in with you again tomorrow. If you have any questions at all, let me know. Uh, I'm here to help, and I look forward to hearing about your progress. Have a great day, and uh, it's almost 3 o'clock. Massage those beads. Talk to you soon.